Right, let's try. Is that hopefully in the right place? So welcome back to another episode of Emma's Updates where I don't have my tripod and I'm just using my phone balanced and hoping that you can see me and hear me okay. So these are just little videos that I make every now and again, now and again just to give you some updates of what's been going on on the Finca and um, keep you in the loop a bit with some animals and um, new changes and problems and things like this that we often have, often having. So this was a bit of an unplanned video but I did write a couple things down to try and make sure I remember. So I'm going to talk a bit about a couple of animals, but some really, really good news on some animals, some, some medium news and some pretty good news. I haven't got any bad news for animals, so that's fantastic. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the building projects and things that are going on. So let's start with, do you remember a while back um, we had a volunteer who came and he wanted to build a sandbag house? Well, and then it didn't get done as quick as we'd all hoped. So we had to go away and now he's back again and we've got the progress going on that. So that's pretty fun. Um, we're sort of just trialing it and learning it and it was sort of a practice thing, but we're literally building a house out of sandbags in full sustainable, uh, full eco way of doing it. But we need a name for it because at the moment we're calling it sandbag house. And they were asking on um, Instagram because we are eventually hopefully going to use this as one of our short term rental short-term volunteer stays and um, it needs a cool name so some people are calling it the bubble house some people the sandbag house but basically it's literally a um, house that's built out of sandbags and I think they're gonna create it with cob around and stuff but we're gonna make a proper video on the process of this soon but that's just an update that that is happening again um, what else is going on so you know do you remember China the the little pig that was found in the bin still can't get over how a pig was found in the bin. We hear this story so regularly with cats and dogs. I mean, not that that's okay that we hear that regularly, but you sort of get used to it, which is really horrible that you get used to something as horrible as finding animals in the bin. I don't know, I've been doing it too long that you hear that story weekly, I suppose. But I've never heard of it with a pig before. An eight-month-old pig was found in the bin. Luckily, fortunately, a guy, um, a nice, a nice man, found her and brought her back to health. And but he couldn't keep her, so he brought her to us. And she was very nervous at the beginning. Understandably, had no trust in humans. But with her, Sylvia's been working so much with her, and the progress is huge. Now she comes over, and you can feed her, and she trusts us, and she's getting there day by day, which is great. So that's that's an amazing little update there. She's a, it's, it makes you feel so much better when you actually see the progress of what's going on. So that's really nice. Um, what else do we have going on? Um, we have the uh, we have, you know, we were talking about our inspection and we had to have lots of different changes and stuff. We're still talking about the inspection. I know it's been going on a long, long, long time. But every time they come, there's something new, and then he's doing, and he's doing. And one of the things on the last, well, two of the things actually on the last one um, was about the dog kennels. We need to make some more dog panels, panels, kennels. That is in progress. But what I was saying this time is we needed to get automatic water drinkers. So we got these um, from our sponsors at Decathlon, and um, the we've got them up and going now. The volunteers have sort of set them up, and the animals are starting to learn how to use them. We've had a cat, the cats like them. The horses are not so sure. Um, and then we've got to put them in the goats and the pig, uh, sorry, not the pigs, the goats and the sheep and the donkeys. And they're all trying to learn them because they're like little, little things like this and they're so used to it from their baths. But it's going to be good. I mean, they, we had to do it for the inspection, but it's also going to save us water wastage when we're cleaning out and with our, the big baths. Ica and Smeagol were always jumping in, whatever we put on the top to try and stop them. Ica, Smeagol, all the ducks were always inside making our water always really dirty. So that's cool, that's happening. Um, some not so good news. We are still struggling with food supplies, but we're trying to stay positive about it because you know that we eat free in here and all of our food comes from waste, one because we live in this sustainable way and we're trying to prevent all the food going into food waste because it's crazy the amount that, that goes in and we've survived so much this way. Oh, a dog is playing with 
Oh, <laughs> stuck in. Um, um, but we lost our contract with the supermarket a while back when the laws changed. We told her we were going to get it going again. And then we've had another problem with the other food supplier. So we've been really, really struggling for the last month. Um, we're hoping to get this one back. But at the moment we're really struggling. However, we have just started with another place. So we have our fingers crossed on that one, but it's a bit more complicated. Hold on, I just saw that noise out. Um, yeah, so it's a bit more complicated, this one. And we have hope, but we, we are struggling at the moment. We've got really a shortage for the small animals. Fortunately, it's been raining this year. <laughs> not, not something you hear me say very often. Fortunately, it's been raining, but it has so there's a lot of natural grass grown, so we're cutting that and using that lot for small animals and um, being resourceful as always. But if anyone's got any ideas of some other supermarkets, fruit and veg shop, but farms, we need, we need a farm who has a banana, we have banana plantations all up our road and all, we want their waste banana leaves, which is just waste, um, but they won't give it to us anymore and we don't know why. Um, so if anyone works at a banana plantation and we could figure out how to get the banana leaves, bananas as well would be great, but the banana leaves, also so yeah a bit of a bit of a struggle trying to feed 45 volunteers at the moment and around 400 small animals is challenging but it is what it is we're working actually on our transparency page on our website at the moment which is where we're going to show exactly where um, where on the donations and money go through because we are 100% non-profit everything goes back to the animals and the, the growth of the sanctuary, but we wanted to make it really clear on the website. So we are working on that. In the last couple of weeks, we've been breaking down all the money, or the last couple of days. And that's that's challenging and depressing. So watch this space on that one. Right. Actually, website, that's an interesting point. <laughs> we're, we're developing that quite a lot at the moment. We've got new animals going on, and um, we're really building up our uh, visibility online. We've, we've got this amazing website, and um, we're just trying to finish it now we're getting more about the sustainability on it sustainable projects and things um, but what we're doing right now if you haven't already is please um, subscribe to our newsletter you get all exclusive updates and things like this we will not spam you we're not making that many of them and if we do you don't like it you just leave it's easy to unsubscribe but the link below is for that and you can just join our mailing list and get exclusive updates every now and again and we've just really started this going and they're good i think they're pretty good we've had a lot of positive feedback from it so far so please join on our mailing list mm. so i actually wrote a list because i probably won't remember anything i'm just rambling anyway most of the things i was talking about were actually not on my list um but one thing i do want to say which is super great news is our wonderful wonky has been officially adopted um, which is fantastic because he was, um, or is, a, a dog with a lot of problems. He, he spent his whole life in a dog shelter, uh, in the, the state one, in a cage. No one wanted him because of his legs. That's why we called him Wonky, his little wobbly legs. And, um, and he was really hard to rehome because of this. But he's such a lovely dog, but because he can't get away quickly because of his legs, he, he, he could be a bit nervous and our place is so overwhelming so many people so many dogs so many animals he's good with people dogs and animals but when there's too much it was too much for him but no one really wanted to give him a chance because of how he looked and how he moved and we found amazing people they just connected they've already got lots and lots of cats and they always already rescue lots of cats and they're worried about getting a dog because in case it chases the cats wonky can't chase the cats and he doesn't care about cats so they had him on trial for a couple of weeks and it went perfectly and they're in love and it's such a happy story because oh, they can give him so much more than we ever could here. Um, so we're always trying. Our, our animals stay, stay with us um, but if we can get them, some of them absolutely love the finca. Like we know, we know the cats, we know all our animals personally and they're free and most of them love this life and we wouldn't actually rehome them to house life or apartment because we know they don't like it. But amid some of our animals, we know that they would prefer a person um, rather than changing over and the freedom. They're different and we really all know them all. And Wonky needed somewhere else. And we do have cats that need somewhere else if you're interested. I can tell you ones that specifically want cuddles and want a person. 
and also Coco is still looking for his home. He needs a person. He gets so connected to a person and he goes, every time a volunteer comes, he changes and then he gets sad and then he falls in love with another volunteer. Then they leave and it's sad and we just hope he can find a home like Monkey. But I can't keep talking about him on every single video. <laughs> it's just we really wanted to find someone. Anyway, I think this video was very, very long. I hope that you can actually hear me over the wind and the background noise and that you can see me. I got it balanced on stuff in front of me because I'm I'm not at the Finker again. I'm house sitting with a friend and uh, thought it was the time to do a bit of an update. So thank you very much for making it through, if you did. And comment below your thoughts if you want to hear of anything else. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter and subscribe to our channel, all that sort of stuff. Just by watching these videos, you help us rescue animals. So thank you very much, and I will see you next week. Bye. Right, testing. I think it's probably too close, and I think it's probably too windy. How's that sound? Can you hear me? Can you see me? So here's my, <laughs> let's see if I can balance it on that and see if it works, because the other one is too low. Now, is that better? Now it might be too high. You might see the thing in front. Um, let's, let's try.